just want to review this PayPal Payments Pro virtual terminal with you a little bit. It's a simple PHP script, so you're going to download this, you're going to upload it to your web server, fill in a config file, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to walk you through that right now. Uh, by using this, you're actually going to save money on transaction rates. PayPal charges lower fees when you use the Payments Pro API, which is what this uses, than they do when you're using their actual virtual terminal. So you'll save a little bit of money, and you'll save some time. You won't have to log into PayPal and worry about timeouts. You can just leave this open all day on your own website and use it whenever you need it. So again, you're just going to, I'll provide a link to this in the comments. You'll come here, you'll download the zip file, extract it to a directory on your website. So here I'm actually using solutions slash POS, and here's all the files that came with the, the solution file. So in includes config.php, we just need to make some changes in here to suit our own needs. At the very top, we got a time zone setting. I'm central time, so I'm going to leave it America Chicago, whatever you're using. You can go to php.net if you need to figure out what you would fill in here. But uh, just need to set this to your time zone. It's better to do it within your script than on your web server. Um, and then also we have a sandbox variable here that right now I've got set to true because I'm going to use the PayPal sandbox for testing. So if you're going to use the sandbox, then leave it that way. If you're going to go live, then you'll want to make sure and switch that to false. And then we have a domain variable that's used throughout the application to do some redirects and things. So you just want to make sure it's set up with however your whatever web server you're running on. So for testing here, I'm actually running on paypal.angeli.com slash solutions slash POS. And if I was, I'm not going to worry about live server, but if I was, I might do www.angeli.com slash solutions slash POS. So whatever your web server is for testing and live, you just want to make sure and fill that in here. Then the only other thing we need to do is fill in some API credentials for PayPal. For your live credentials, which would go over here on this right side, and your sandbox credentials go on the left. The live credentials, PayPal actually provides a tool now that I have a link here to. So you can copy that you can load that and it'll just bring up a real simple get your API signature screen. If you log into this with your PayPal account it'll just spit back your API username, password, and signature. You can also just go into your PayPal account profile and go into API access or I think it might say request API credentials then you gotta drill down into your signature for PayPal but this is a lot quicker and easier. Um, again for now we're just using the sandbox. So I'm going to go to my PayPal developer account at developer.paypal.com. If you're not familiar with this, I have another video on this you might want to check out. Helps you set up test accounts and things so that you can run tests with PayPal. So for here, I'm just going to go into API and payment card credentials. And here are some credentials. I'm going to use this account here as my seller account for this. So I'm going to grab the username paste that in, grab the password, paste that in, and same with our signature value. And notice here on my signature it left an extra space. We'll get an error if we leave that, so I'm going to make sure and get rid of the extra space there. Save that, upload this to our web server, and now we're ready to go. So the screen itself, I've got open in this tab here, you can see it's very bare bones. You can drop this into your own design theme or leave it as is and use it this way. Nobody will ever really see it but you and maybe your employees. Um, but again, it should be real simple for you to just drop into any kind of design theme you want. So let's go ahead and run a test here. Let's say we want to do a $100 order. We might have a shipping amount of $5, handling $1.50, and let's just go ahead and throw in an 8% sales tax rate. You can see it totals that up for us. Now we might do an XYZ ABC invoice number. Look like I've already done that one, so might want to do a different one. And we just might want to call this Widget Services. This is a test. Now we have the option to either swipe a card with a USB credit card reader, or we can key in the information if we need to. I'm using a USB credit card reader from usbswiper.com. You can pick these up there cheaper than really anywhere else I've seen them. Now I'm going to take my credit card and I'm just going to swipe it through the reader 
we'll see it fills in the information for me so I don't have to key that out and now I could either fill in a billing address a shipping address if I want to if I don't need it I can leave it blank sometimes depending on your PayPal account settings you may or may not have to fill some of that in my settings are set up to allow everything so I'm just gonna leave them all blank and if you wanted to say shipping not required it wouldn't pass any shipping details over to PayPal so it'll look nice and neat in your PayPal transaction details so let's go ahead and fill this in for now just so we can take a look at what it looks like we'll do our one two three test Avenue I'll do my Grand View, Missouri and then we might as well just leave everything else the same so we'll go ahead and hit process card and here again we have a very bare bones result page um, this is meant for you to drop into your own design or whatever but it just shows you the result brings back the card type and number the billing and the shipping information that was passed and also because this was run in sandbox mode or test mode I've dumped out the actual details here that get sent to and from PayPal so if you're the developer and you feel like you need to see this data for some reason here's all the exact data that got sent back from PayPal and here's all the exact data that got sent to PayPal for this transaction so if you ever feel like something's not quite right you could look here and see what, how it's getting sent over and maybe track down the problem but uh, let's go ahead and say new transaction or actually first let's go back to our sandbox here and we'll go test accounts and we'll go down to the test account that we just ran this transaction with and we'll open that up it's going to open this third party window and I need to grab that email address we'll log into our sandbox seller account that we just processed this card with so we can take a look at how the details came over so here we can see here's the transaction we just ran we'll click into the details of that and now we can actually see ship to address got passed over we've got our totals and everything as expected there's our eight dollar sales tax five and a dollar fifty here's our invoice ID all the result codes that came back for the credit card we can see here that it was a PayPal payments pro virtual terminal sale and we can see down here it was processed as a website payments pro API solution which again that's when PayPal sees that they're gonna give you that lower rate so now we can go back let's just take a look I'm gonna go in just to show you we'll open up our config file again and I'm just gonna remove the value off my password there so that's gonna cause an error of course so we'll say new transaction let's do ten dollars two dollars we'll just leave everything else the way test error this is an error test and again we can get out our USB credit card reader we'll swipe the card fills in the information for us and I'm gonna go ahead and hit process card this time though you can see we get an error security error security header is not valid that's because the credentials were wrong and once again it dumps out all this information for us so we can take a look at it as a developer this information doesn't show up when you're running live if sandbox is set to false then this is not going to show up here so all you would see is the error page here and we could go try again if we need to so that's pretty much all there is to it any questions feel free to contact me happy swiping